Imam Abdul Alim Musa received death threats. Now, Crescent did this for a while. Uh, armed intruders attacked Masjid al Islam in Oakland. Armed intruders attacked Masjid al Islam in Oakland. Now, these are all different incidents. Sabotage death threats against Imam Musa and now grand larceny of Masjid al Islam accounts. I never heard in history what it takes you, the guy that opened the account, off of an account and put somebody else on it. Of course, we'll sue Bank of America, but it don't make no difference. We didn't win this game. It don't make no difference. I'm telling you, the locks are on boss man so thick that even when we mention this stuff, and we mention it on a semi-regular basis, Boss man is done for. This is the deed uh, to the masjid in Oakland. And it's got uh, my slave name. This is from uh, 1981. It's got my slave name. This deed is mailed to my house in those days. And, and it's got my signature on it, Right? Clarence Reams. They just drove right over that. Can you imagine? And I want you to, to play along with this a little while. We're here in D.C. And uh, we're going through these changes. So we have the other, another uh, agent. Uh, we call him Baba Kloon. And I'm just leaning over with Baba Kloon. Baba Kloon. They're going to pull, I didn't call him Baba Kloon. That's sort of man. Man, they're going to take our property out there in Oakland. They're going to take our property out there in Oakland. And guess what? They sell that same property. <laughs> of course, he can't, they can't do that, but they did it. That's what psychological guerrilla warfare is. Psychological warfare is that you discombobulate. Uh, Lao Tu said it, know your enemy, know yourself. A thousand battles, a thousand victories. Okay, so if you know how boss man thinks over the years, it's easy for you to set him up. Because in crime, they all, that's how they always do. They set people up all the time, right? So if you're watching and you understand how it's going, we set them up. Not only we set them up, we set the whole group, the whole organization, the whole institution. So whether it's the institution in South Africa, whether it's the institution in Canada, whether it's the institution here in D.C., whether it was the institutions, you got to think of it, several other institutions on and near universities, at least eight of them, uh, Asabakun movements, all of them under the leadership and under the control of the United States government with my name on it. And I know it. Of course. So what are we going to do? You have to study how people operate, their thought patterns. You study all of that stuff. And then after a while, you put together a package. And I want to go over it a little bit. Uh, now, we always looked at our job as being archivists, documentalists, chroniclers. You know, this is what we said that we wanted to do. But in order to do that, you have to develop what we call strategic depth. Not surface depth. Depth, uh, surface movement stuff. Strategic depth means you have a long protracted process that you're going through and you're going to carry your enemy or your oppressor up to the threshold of his oppression so that he is now visible to everybody else. 
but he's absorbed so much in his crime and misery that he don't recognize that you didn't place him there and everybody watching him. See, every, all of this stuff, it's all in the paper, everything, right? This is all surface. Everybody in Oakland saw what was going on. Okay, there's another the thing to go with this. You have to lead this thing into safe ground where you're safe at. And you're safe being by yourself. You're safe standing alone. Because you've been trained that way. How? Who trained you? Boss man. If you were a petty leader everywhere you went from a little kid into adulthood, and you didn't, you was not a flunky, the boss man would send you to segregation, send you to the hole. He would isolate you because you have a disease. You have a bad attitude, right? So you're used to being cut off and isolated and systematically eliminated from the flow of people. So you're used to being by yourself. So what does that mean? It's just like uh, Brother Rabbit and Brother Bear. Please don't throw me in that briar patch. And that's just where he wanted to get thrown. Isolated, segregated from everybody. Like now, isolated, cut off. Right? This was the fullest masjid in this region. And now it's the emptiest. It's maybe the biggest, but it's the emptiest. Why? Because boss man used all of his techniques and all of his people. Join in the morning and leave in the evening so that everybody will begin to think something is going on with this guy. Is it cold in here or is it seem like, or is it just right? Yeah, it's okay, just a little bit. Just push the button down a little or up a little, whatever. Yeah, up a little. So anyway... Strategic depth from the Negro style. Now, here's the thing that's important. The things that you use to fight your enemy is the things that God give you and your people. And you're not embarrassed by it. This is very important. So if Allah give you coonery, Use coonery. If Allah give you clownery, use clownery. So everything that Allah give you, you have to be thankful for that. And you know that that is designed for me, for us. And I'm going to use that gladly. Why am I going to use it? Okay, Psychological guerrilla warfare is one thing, but now we're in another level of psycho-spiritual warfare. Why would you use something called psycho-spiritual warfare? Is because you have some feel for that and knowledge of it, and boss man don't. And he can't get what you're doing or what you're talking about at all. It don't fit for him. It's just like when Yusuf told Pharaoh, read the thing, the Pharaoh, he said seven cows going in the water, seven coming out of seven grain. The people that was used to that stuff said, this is a madly, I ain't no, I don't know nothing about that. But the guy, Cupbearer, said, there's a guy down in the hole. That's where he was. There's a guy in the hole down there. He can unload, he can Hook that hook you up with what that means. And he did. He hooked it up. And no matter what anybody says to boss man now, boss man is befuddled. Okay, if if anybody wonders why we would wait until now to get ready to go back to Oakland and do this and do that, is because we was waiting for the right time. You get the right time, let Allah tell you it's the right time, now you go back and do that. Yeah. Or when are we going? 
we're going back when everything boss man is doing is turning the S-H-I-T in his hand. He can't mess up more. It's possible. But it, you, he has to be really focused on what he's doing to mess up more. To start a problem with Russia and think everybody's going to uh, join a team. And everybody is mumbling, talking about, we're starving to death, man. We could get in a, and, you know, inflation and da 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 da. And everybody's backing up. We're going to win this war in two or three days. And all of a sudden now it's going on and on and on. And they're not winning nothing. Why? Because they had a movie star as the president. Not a politician. Not a trained politician. So what do they give him? They give him the, 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 the cameras. You go there in your t-shirt and you talk gangster talk. For him, that's the war. That's not the war. You idiot. The man don't even have no concept because he's not trained in it. Now, in what we're doing, we're trained in what we're doing. This is not accidental. We didn't stumble upon this. You can't get lucky uh, every now and then and stumble upon what we have. You had to organize it Put it in process, come back every now and then, pour a little water on it, clip the hedges and everything. This was has been managed from day one. Everything we're doing, but not from day one. It became very clear in 1986, and we wrote on, I might have gave you all that paper, big victory when he took accordion folders. You know, he took, took all of my folders and took all... I said, okay, he's going to read my stuff from now on. Therefore, what the hell am I going to write on my new stuff from 1986? Why is he doing the stuff he's doing? Because he's stupid. I done wrote down right there what I, why? Because he's, as soon as I go out, he's reading his stuff, taking pictures of it, and da 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 da, getting it copied. And it's simple. He think he's going to take my stuff and it's going to make me paranoid because now they know how I think. Great. No, 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 no. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to set him up. <clears throat> this is counter espionage. Right? Everything I write down, everything I do, it's going to be shifted from 15 to 5%. But he don't know. And he ain't going to surround me. I'm going to surround him. That's why we're here today. That's why we're here today. And everything is going our way. But where is everybody? They can stay home. Who needs them? It's not the war we're fighting. Mm -mm. No. It's between me and boss man. Me and boss man. And I'm whooping boss man's behind and talking about him and making a fool out of him. And everybody knows it. Why? Because here we are today. And the people they got executing their stuff is clowns, buffoons. Look, here's a guy can call the police and they're there and he's standing out there right in front like it's okay. And we got his picture right here. I'm not saying they're dummies, but they couldn't, they would have to be police. Here's why. You study different people. In the game, they had guys that were smart enough to, uh, you know, to manip manipulate the environment so they could break them off a piece of whatever's going on. Mukhtar and Abdul Malik them are not like that. They're not like that. They're not smart enough to uh, look at the world and say, I'm going to get me a piece. Their kinds, we belong to the system. We're systems niggas. Their system niggas, by he and them as system system, they're all, all of them, that whole crew, 
easy to fix. Why are they systems niggas? What do they think? What they taught to think? How are they going to picture it? They're going to picture everything. So you just talk to them and you lead them along. That's because know your enemy. Know yourself. A thousand battles, a thousand victories. This is so easy, it's not even uh, to arrange this type of thing. So here it is. Me no Mookie. Uh, there's marginal probative value. Uh, uh, value of any probative value is outweighed by the risk of undue prejudice. The jury may hold it against the people. That means 